Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Genuine love starts from your spirit, man. Genuine love. Start way before any man appears. It's not that you see somebody tall, dark and handsome. All of a sudden you cannot sleep. There is a character and a nature of love that is welled up in you. Are you getting my point please? I sought him but I found him not. Verse 3, let's hurry up. The watchman. Ah yeah, this is a powerful revelation. In a bit to look for someone, please, lady, sister, anybody. Thank you. Watch this. This lady is looking for the person her soul loves. Now, in a bid to search, there are certain people she met on the way called watchmen. Are you getting my point now? This watchman. The watchmen that go about the city found me to whom I said, saw ye him that my soul loveth. That means in a bit to communicate this desire, she met an evangelist. She met a man of God. She came for a meeting. These watchmen have the ability to channel her to the true love. Please, is someone following? And the Bible says, verse 4, It was, it was but a little that I passed from them. But I found him whom my soul loved. After she met and encountered this watchman. After a season, many things happened during her encounter with the watchman. And she found this one that her soul loved. And she said, I held him and will not let him go. She had found the love of her life indeed no confusion it says until i had brought him to whose house the woman that trained me the woman that qualified me to get into marriage to my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me this is not romance at all this is a very deep spiritual communication so the process starts with God who is able to put that desire. Are you getting my point now? If that desire is not planted in you, sister, you may never truly get married. Please believe what I'm saying. It's not just the issue of no man wants to ask me out. It started with God putting a desire. When God puts that desire all these two years of posting men and say i'm thinking about it is either he's not the one or he's the one as simple as that when she found the person her heart truly loved she knew it hallelujah thank you now i want you to see the level of passion i loved him i held him are you getting my point now look that, that level of love cannot happen in a human sense. It takes the spirit of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you see that many of the things we call love in marriage and relationship truly is not that God kind of love? I'm not just talking of agape. That love that God plans a man for his wife and a wife for that man. Let me tell you. I want to give you a litmus test very clear lady if the guy you are thinking of saying yes to if you are not passionate about him in love pack your load and leave quickly before you say yes that love is the ingredient that will sustain that relationship through the thick and thin please are you getting what i'm saying it's not enough to love a woman or love a man you must have passion 
The Bible describes it as fire. Not lost. Because you saw a nice lady figure eight. Not lost. Remember that this love we are talking about started before she even looked at him. That was why the day you gave your life to Christ, you knew it. You knew you had found something. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my everything. Lost usually thrives just on the senses. Are you getting my point now? When you see a lady looking hot, looking fine, you are not even sure of what you have now, whether it's lost or is it a physique that attracted you. So many brothers just see a lady looking nice and hot and they say, I love this girl. In two minutes, you see a perfect stranger. They call it love as first sight. Nonsense. Spiritual things don't work like that. That's destruction at first sight. A man who meets a lady. Listen. Remember, we are still discussing for this course. You just see a perfect stranger. You've never seen her. You just come, what's your name? Taiwan. Say, Taiwan, I'm in love. Ah! Hold on. Listen. Listen. In as much as you see the person and connect with the person, to just look and say, I am asking you out. Give me an answer now. We are going to spend the rest of our lives together. Are you stupid? Do you know the implication of staying with one person? One. You five years to finish to finish your degree. You, you almost killed the whole school before you graduated. Now you want to spend the rest of your God-given life. To get old together. To wake up and see the same person at the side of your bed. is a great mystery. God must help you. It's not given to man. I'm telling you, you will be tired if this love does not come from the spirit. I don't care what you saw. It will fade like a leaf. That's why a brother can see a lady right now. Oh, you saw a lady at a dinner. Heron. Ah! My blood is hot. What is wrong? Oh God, give me this person. Two weeks later, she removed her with one. And you just pass her, see if you didn't see her. Heron says... Make progress. They make progress. I'm pressing into God now. That's the excuse people use. I'm, I'm pressing. I, I need, please, don't distract me. I need to press into God. The same guy that is pressing into God one week later is seeing another person again. The retreat is over by force. hallelujah listen let me tell you something sisters if you are really a spiritual lady you will understand when seasons a brother should not really come and just of course there are principles of friendship building intimacy but i'm telling you a brother shouldn't just come and take you unawares where did you keep your spirit there there are there are seasons Hallelujah. You are prepared from your prayer life and the dealings of God in that season. You begin to sense that Kai, based on the dealings of the spirit, I'm already beginning to sense a release. So you go to pray and all of a sudden Aaron flashes your mind and you're like, Jesus, I bind it. What is going on here? I have found whom my soul loves. Please let me talk for a few minutes about this love thing. If you are not passionate, sister, how many of you have seen how many of you have seen a lady who a guy calls by 11 o'clock and she's quarreling him. I'm tired. Why will you call me at this time and say I'm sorry? I'm sorry I you know what all this loyalty that guys do when they are waiting for years and the lady is now raking please i'm tired I, I i i will talk to you later on as tired as she is another brother calls 10 minutes later 
before it finishes hello how are you i mean her her expression cannot even be hidden her heart suddenly jumps to her face and her voice and the guys know the guy knows that she has been missing and waiting for that call network calls you quarrel because of credit now you are calling by yourself say no 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 problem you have you have been trying truly let me tell you listen when you get married to the person your heart truly does not love you have signed a record of unfaithfulness forever you will struggle i don't care whether you are anointed with fire on your head believe what i'm telling you that's why when you marry because of money you saw the guy and he told you that uh, i just came back from dubai i have some buildings around i have a lot of this and your heart just melts your mother says let's pray say mommy please have, you have been taking decision for me all the days of my life this one i'm stamping my feet i must marry him because you want the money and then the money does not go again I, the money disappears and you find out that your heart is not stay to love him again everybody say passion everybody say love when you marry the person you genuinely love you can sit together and drink gary even if you stay in a touched house and you find fulfillment and satisfaction when you marry somebody you don't love you give excuses over everything if you already married there's nothing you can do about it just trust god to paint the cross for you to the color you want but that cross you must carry it is someone getting blessed I'm not necessarily speaking in a marriage and a relationship talk i'm just trying to show you how marriage relates because in a standard marriage is in there are things we are going to talk about issues of divorce issues of all of these kinds of things another thing we see is that there was a seeking everybody says seeking both on the part of the man the part of the lady is not really seeking as it were is positioning write it you position yourself to be found and the man seeks there are all kinds of arrogant men who are too proud to seek you will remain unmarried i tell you the truth jesus said i came to seek and save this my bride called the lost I came to seek he told the prophet go and look for a prostitute go around seek you will find this prostitute called goma marry her as an adumbration of my desire to be reconciled to this my bride ladies tell the men seek shout it say I'm a hot cake ladies like me all around seek my brother open your eyes before they fool you with good looks seek by the spirit you don't seek blindly how do you seek you shall seek me and find me when you go for retreats that's seeking when you read a good book you are positioning yourself to seek well shout seek there are many brothers yelling at the gates of heaven day and night oh god oh god this and that get up and seek and sister position yourself it's not enough to say why wouldn't this brother look at me see it's a spiritual atmosphere when you are not ready for relationship it's like a magnet it pushes people away to be ready doesn't mean i like a man for this cause have you positioned yourself We have to run the bible reveals three ways that connections are made for marriage and relationship number one is desire and passion desire genuine 
godly desire and passion. Please, everything I'm saying here is tied to the kingdom. Not everyone is going to see a vision about his wife. And it doesn't mean you are not spiritual. Say amen. Now look up. Not everybody is going to see a vision. You were just standing and all of a sudden, you saw this welfare lady cooking. And God says, arise. Arise. Why sitest thou here? Go and take your position. He said, nay, Lord, but I am weak. And God will say, no, 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 you are not weak. If that's what you are waiting for, you may be disappointed. God can plant a genuine passion. Listen, please. You are a worker in the house. Right? Faithful worker. I'm not talking of careless. You are not contributing anything to the kingdom of God. And you want to reap every harvest that others are working for. You, you, must, you must genuinely participate in kingdom building. Ah, One day suddenly you find out. Genuine desire. Please remove loss from it. You see that. Ah, You notice that there is an unusual desire and passion for patience. Come patience. Unusual desire. Now watch this. When this happens, brothers, it's too early. Many of you don't have self-control. Once, once you feel anything, you land it till the lady lands it back at you. Be, be temperate. Don't just say, let me ask first though, before another person will come and ask. You don't know whether she's in a relationship. You don't know whether what, you just go and disgrace yourself. The Lord told me you are the one. She said, sorry, we are getting married next week. And you carry, you, you, you now feel stupid. You feel irresponsible. A word spoken in due season. Ladies, shout due season. There is a due season, my brother. So God can use a simple, godly desire. I've seen this lady. I, I, I connect with her in the spirit. And over time, as you build friendship, please bless you. Many brothers don't even understand the concept of friendship. They just come and say, stranger, you are my wife, I will marry you. Go and pray about it. I will hear tomorrow. What sort of nonsense is that? It's very rude. It, may not, it has worked for others, but I'm telling you, it's very rude. You don't walk up to a lady and just say, you are my wife pray about it that's bullying especially if you're a man of God or you're a great person don't use position to intimidate ladies is someone learning something tonight desire and passion there are many of us that you find yourself having a godly, genuine desire for someone. And some of us are very embarrassed. Suddenly you're embarrassed that somebody you're always praying with. Ah, uh Kai, -uh. why am I? And now you go to pray. You find yourself looking at ushers. You are trying, trying. Ah, uh -uh. and see, there are brothers that come here by three o'clock and still sit outside. Everybody say passion. Because the person they are waiting for has not come. And they say, look, let me pay that price. What is it? If this is a cross I must carry, I must carry. That passion is very good. Because the day the lady breaks her hand. Huh? Or the day they carry out a surgery on her. That passion will sustain your love. There are many ladies. The day something happens to the guy. They just turn around as if it's not the one they like. He has not asked them out. Oh. They are so not proud of him. Something as little as running in a football field and he takes last. The lady just turned. Cry! Brother has fallen my hands. It's too early. What sort of, what, what is your concept of marriage? The brother has malaria and he vomits. And everybody is looking and you, you just start nauseating. You are not, you are, you are feeling so discomforted. You are not ready for marriage. As simple as that. Is someone listening to me? I'm hurrying up because I want to talk on roles and codes of conduct. 
so a passion number two the prophetic god has also positioned the prophetic to help the man in locating the woman the prophetic there means either prophecy or the ministry of the holy spirit in your life and please i must balance this because that's what brought the issue of vision i saw a vision i saw a dream i saw this hallelujah hold on let me use the opportunity and balance something right now look up everybody god has not ordained you as a spiritual matchmaker moving around and looking at people and say aaron the lady you are sitting behind whether you see a vision or you have a dream about yourself or somebody else it must be handled with utmost maturity because marriage is a great mystery are you getting my point now you can go and meet an innocent lady and tell her do you know that i saw my man looking at you and all of a sudden it becomes an artificial desire especially if it falls at a point in her life where she's vulnerable ladies you know what i'm talking about right and then at that point all of a sudden this lady now begins to tie herself and maybe let's assume my man is even minding his business with another lady is someone getting what i'm saying please be careful when it has to do with giving people prophecy don't stand with utmost authority and look and say i have seen it if it does not happen god didn't call me and the lady is waiting then she sees the guy's invitation card La, what's the name Aaron. le pose and the lady is now wondering oh god what is going on this is my husband here leaving me oh lord and people engage in all kinds of skills and spiritual activity in a bit to recover back the kingdom does not leave us to confusion. Don't you, on another hand, neglect the place of the prophetic. There are so many people I've seen in my dreams and visions. Way before, in fact, when I saw it, they did not even know themselves. Even me, when I saw it, I was surprised. And by the hand of God, God came and connected them. You know why I'm saying this? When it comes to marriage... Even prophecy can change. So, when you tie people, you now look and say, Kasham, stand up. He's a tall guy. One day he will sit down two seats close to you. Write it down. His name is Adriel. If you miss him, you have missed your husband. Five years, Kasham is still going around. Hoping, Adriel, where are you? Adriel is planning his wedding. Are you getting my point? Aaron now comes and says, uh-uh, it's Adriel. They told me Adriel. Fair guy adriel any dark guy that comes uh -uh. i don't want the guy is fair kasham will sit forever no husband because somebody injected a wrong prophecy into her are you getting what i'm saying now there are many of us who may be sitting down right now the way we are wrong prophecies wrong prophecies Please be careful. It must be discerned and balanced carefully. Listen to me. Listen. It was God himself that appointed Saul to be king. Is that true? It was the same God that now rejected Saul as king. True or false? It was God that appointed Moses to take God's people to the land flowing with milk and honey. Did God tell him he would not get there? later on it was the same god that stopped him so be careful that you saw a lady in a vision is no guarantee that you must marry her there are many factors that must come together alignment are you getting my point there is alignment there is what parental approval and all of these other factors for others maybe tribal differences or whatever it is there are factors together so it doesn't just make it work automatically. Please get this revelation. If you don't get it, you are going to fool yourself into error. However, under a guided atmosphere of the word and spiritual maturity, prophecy can be very powerful. Hallelujah. Prophecy can be powerful in helping you understand your spouse. 
Number three, please play Mike. Divine connection, just like that. No vision, no nothing. Divine connection. For instance, we now give, come for me. MD just gives them a song to score together. He's doing his work as MD. But the spirit of God, come on now. The spirit of God, vetoing worship team Riazal. I'm not much making, I'm just giving an example. Hallelujah. And in the course of the Riazal, they have a course to discuss about life. And they find out that there is a connection in ideologies. All of a sudden, Femi supernaturally starts having credit. Favor. That's God cooperating with the event to happen. Somebody just sent one five. Whereas they wouldn't have sent one five. Every time you pray towards that relationship, Taiwo now wants to go and eat by two. But she's delayed to go by four. The only seat left is the seat where Femi is sitting. Everybody say divine connection. Oh, it happens. Absolutely. It happens. They've been inviting you for Koinonia for how many years? Suddenly, 2014, God just brings you. They say, turn around and hug one another. And goodness, good. Destiny. It happens. Say it happens. Your wife is an usher now. Say amen. Very happy, sitting down, smiling and see the wife blushing are you getting the point now let me tell you something in the house of God your wife is there in the house of God sister your husband is there the Bible says he that lives by the altar should eat by the altar I'll say it I'll say it by the end of today, we will turn around and greet one another. You will just greet one another and say, Oh God, open my eyes. With this corporate anointing, open my eyes. The Bible says he broke bread and their eyes were opened. Alas, the sister you have been seeing every day. The Lord tells you, son of man, the season has come. Aaron was moving around. And he went to prayer band while the sister was praying. God was saying, Just serve, just serve Ruth. You will soon go to Naomi's vineyard and serve. Do you know many of you, because of your marriage, God took you from you got 200 and something, they didn't give you admission there. God relocated you and brought you in a season. Everybody said divine connection. That's how we meet destiny help us. That's how many of you gave your life to Christ. You were strolling around and you had a preacher preaching. You just said, let me enter and listen to the message. Divine connection. And you met destiny. That's how some of you came to Koinonia. It's one of the principles. In fact, let me tell you the truth. It's one of the strongest ways that couples are connected together. Serving in the house of God. So as you pray, you say, Lord, connect me divinely. Oh my god watch again so the parties involved in a true kingdom marriage there are three parties involved everybody say three parties number one is the man number two is the woman who would become his wife number three is jesus himself represented in the person of the holy spirit in a kingdom marriage you do not have two people alone please understand this that means in a kingdom marriage even the man is not the final authority he submits to a government higher than him this is the only way the values of the kingdom can be initiated and sustained there are men that believe they are the alpha and omega and they look at a lady and say didn't i pay your dowry i will beat you in this room and will lock the door here when you know there is a third witness who can also deal with you now the man slaps her two weeks later his hand and his leg cannot move again and it's the same woman who will carry him to the hospital 
do you know the bible said that on account of your faithfulness to your wife or not you can stop your prayers from being answered there are many people sweating in the bush whereas the answer to their prayer is just diligence in in honor of the wife please brothers understand that in a kingdom marriage you are not the final authority although you are the head physically but compared to christ you are also the bride are you following me now number three if we just dwell here it's all right the roles the roles now 5 verse 22 please open your eyes 5 verse 22 we'll start reading downward god is about to distribute roles to the parties involved he's about to give codes of conduct ladies can you read this one two read The first three words please first three words are you ready one two read submit what your money your withhold your ability to cook it says submit what see to understand the gravity of this revelation it says offer your body as a living sacrifice it's the same word he's using here for the woman submit everything about you ladies need to hear this message all this women alive movement that is going rebellion against men we are the freedom fighters fighting for our right it must happen our way the bible says wives submit what are you seeing why you don't have a choice about submission your choice is the kind of head you submit to so you must you must trust God for a head that is worth your total submission. Wives, submit yourself to your own husband the same way you submit yourself unto the Lord. That's a dangerous statement. I saw some people lying on the ground. Some of you were rolling on the floor some of you were lying down on the ground as a sign of submission and surrender the bible says in that same way if you are going to be a faithful wife man this statement is so ego stinging you need the grace of god are you seeing why it's a great mystery wives submit yourselves unto your husband in the same capacity you come to koinonia and you're worshiping and you don't care whether your wivon falls or not you are just giving him all the praise and he's saying that same passion transfer it to your husband are you saying that marriage is not a child's play 23 for the husband it gives you the reason why you should submit hallelujah let me tell you very quickly submit to your own husbands the same way why is the reason for submission or what is the reason for submission he said for the husband is what reason number one ladies you are not equal in the home you are equal in christ you are equal in creation based on the grace and the blessings of god you are equal but when it comes to marriage the same way you and jesus christ you are one with christ in that marriage but when it comes to your roles in the kingdom when the gospel of the kingdom is is taught are you getting my point now you understand that like a faithful bride you must submit to your husband in all things are you getting my point so although you are equal you are not equal because you qualified you are equal because he married you he brought you into that oneness so give him that honor and then the bible says something interesting again he said and he is the savior of the body this is a dangerous statement the man what does it mean being a savior it means <laughs> he's the one who paid the price 
to make the marriage work he paid the dowry although i hear that in nigeria there are some places where it's the women that do all kinds of things i don't know what they believe in honestly but i'm teaching you the kingdom in other words give the man that honor for going to look for clothes and put him in three Ghana, three what Aaron. and buying one cow and dragging it to your mother's house the bible says submit to him in honor don't trivialize what he has done are you getting my point on account of that price he paid he traveled with you to the village to go and see all your relatives they insulted him he said yes sir they said lie down he laid down he did all kinds of things paid all kinds of transport fare for people he said because he has paid this price just like christ paid the price to ransom us he said he paid that dowry that made you a wife so don't trivialize it without dowry without that price there is no marriage the man paid the dowry and he said in response to that submit the place is quiet right now ah, yeah. we are still on oh. ladies say in the name of Jesus <laughs> you don't want to say it say it oh. in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be submissive many of you have very bad attitude towards men generally not to talk of the man who is your husband you can shout at anybody you can give it to anybody and don't care say me they know i'm fire don't try me i will give it to you may god deliver you because this is not a mindset of the kingdom write it quickly in your prayer request during miracle service transformation transformation 25 guys are you ready say yes all right let's read one to read ah this is not you shout it with the same voice one to read stop husbands do what it didn't say think about loving her husbands love your wife if the bible stopped there there would have been a big confusion because any man would have created his reference for love are you getting me so you can say i sent you 200 naira recharge card ha huh? what sort of nonsense is this didn't i try the bible said uh -uh. i did not leave you to guess your concept of love he said even as what christ loved the church behold i show you a mystery husbands there is a standard that has been created everybody say a standard say it a standard whether you are Igbo, whether you are yoruba whether you are hausa whether you are from wherever there is a standard an uncompromising non-negotiable kingdom standard for every man to love his wife ladies that's good news you should clap and thank god for it because he didn't leave some of these cruel men to their personal opinion there are men see you see people around and and you look there's no love in them and then it so happens that most of these men marry very good wives very good godly wives and the man comes he cannot love her he cannot do anything our job in the house is just to keep producing babies sexual intimacy is not necessarily love that's why a man can sleep with a prostitute and pay her and pass her on the street and not even know husbands love your wives as christ loved the church how did christ love the church because god knew that many men would still argue it and complain so he added to let you know how did christ love the church let's read on brothers one to read he gave he gave he gave himself you know what it means to give yourself 
so it's not only the woman the woman is submitting herself in everything and the bible says the man has to give himself what does it mean to give himself it means sacrifice it means passion it means build her and make her glorious spiritually socially physically financially constrain yourself no matter what it takes to prove your love for your wife next verse please 26 let's hurry up okay 27 or 27 28 i just want to jump that he might present that bride so as a man if you are truly loving your wife you should be able to present her as a bride that glorious church without having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that you should be holy without blemish these are exact standards god is giving a man that there is a kingdom perspective of, of love that should be channeled to the woman she should see passion from you to her she should see the sacrifice you are making financially spiritually physically if that is not done brothers and sisters you are not loving your wife so you should only think of marriage when you are aware and prepared to play your role christ the bible says philippians 2 verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus that although he knew he was god he taught it not to be equality for the love that he had are you getting my point for his bride the church he came down to become a man went through every price through the beating of gethsemane through the nailing of the cross the degradation and everything he did it as a demonstration of his love so when you tell a lady i love you she looks at your life to see the sacrifice i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy please i'm i'm, I'm busy i can't talk to you let me tell you you always have time for what you love always sisters when a guy starts doing unnecessary and busy is a sign to sit down and talk thank you jesus as simple as these things are they will produce award-winning homes if you abide by them summarizing what is the role of the wife to love with such passion and to submit in everything the bible says that submit in everything 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 i think that's verse 29 is that 29 yes i think so uh okay no I can, one of the scriptures anyway i cannot find exactly where it is but it says submit in everything let it say everything now that's a very dangerous statement submit your body submit your finances finance has caused big trouble my mother was just me of of a wedding that happened in joss in 24 hours the wedding scattered as they went to the hotel room they didn't even give thanks the lady just said the money that was collected he said most of the people came because of me i, I hardly saw your people there so the money that was raised please for peace to reign just channel it to me and the guy said you will know i paid your dowry that was it case closed she packed her things like she was joking and left submitting everything there are women that password their phones from their husbands this this section is passworded and they call the name of the rich man rachel or, or mary hello mary how are you and they run away oh god why are you calling me by this time the bible says that is called unfaithfulness 
Some of you are already starting it in your relationship. Somebody else will give my phone, please. Huh? Must you check everything? When there is transparency and truth. Are you getting my point now? The Bible says, he who walks in the light will not stumble. Especially this our generation. We have a lot of hidden skeletons. So many things. A lady is in a relationship. The guy is there dreaming, hoping to marry her. Whereas there are five or six different people. One gives money in January. The other one gives money in February. The other one gives money in March. By April, the first one can repeat. The second repeats again. Don't laugh because as, as we are seated here, I know this is the house of God. There are people right now in this situation. You want to be a faithful bride. Hallelujah. Your commitment. Submit in everything. Submit in everything. If it's your husband, it's your husband. You don't need to know how much is in my account. The Bible says submit in everything. Your body. Everything. I had a story of a woman who doesn't allow her husband to meet with her until he pays her. Yeah. Said he's a stingy man. So I know exactly how to get money from him. You may be justified. They may clap for you. But you are violating the ordinance of marriage in the kingdom. And don't you think God will spare you because the man is irresponsible. Remember there is a third witness in that marriage. That's why I told you it's not just two people alone. There is a third witness. Husband, as you slap your wife, there is a third witness. Woman, as you cheat on your husband, there is a third witness. Let me start from relationship. As we play games with one another in relationship. Some of you ladies in the hostel, you call the guy and you put the phone on loudspeaker and he's just communicating his love and you are laughing. There are many people laughing. They are just laughing and say, really, I love you too. And the guy say, I love you. And you are just laughing at him. There is a third witness. There is a third witness. There is a third witness. The guy is there planning and praying putting on his Facebook so 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 is my wife and you are now laughing from the one you never planned to get married to him say I will suck this guy dry like this thing that is stingy hand I must open it you are already you have done introduction the person does not know let me tell you it's not fair it's called halotry it's a great mystery faithfulness is very important it's a different thing if the relationship does not work but that you are willingly, consciously unfaithful. It doesn't work that way. Many of us say, gather them plenty, just gather. The Bible says in the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, sow your seed. You don't know which one you will reap from. Continue. When all the seeds grow, I don't know which one you will kill. I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name. Listen, the Bible says submit in everything. Submit your mindset. Lady say submit your mindset. I must deal with the issue of mindset. If, the, if I cannot finish this topic today, listen, listen, brothers and sisters, I don't care whether you saw a star falling and hit a sister and fell on you too to prove that's your wife. If your mindset do not agree, your marriage will not work. Can two work together? Amos 3 verse 3. The man will not bend his mindset to meet you. Just like Christ will not submit his mindset to your Igbo culture or your Yoruba culture or Hausa culture or plateau culture or benway culture or kogi culture you will have to submit we call that repentance you submit your mindset there are many stubborn wives in the world today who come with their ideologies the family for instance may have just five thousand naira coming in a month 
and the woman can come and say Mio, I don't wear 2,500 Naira wrapper if, if it's not this it's not that the husband is saying don't worry God is faithful he will help us so I mean I, I, don't, I don't buy chicken that you know I don't do all of these things submit your mindset everybody say submit your mindset in the little time that I have counseling people one of the biggest issues I've seen in relationship is not that the marriage is not workable but both parties are not yet willing to bend and submit their mindsets everybody say mindset say mindset you must submit your mindset there are ladies who have all kinds of poisonous mindsets your concept of love is spend lavishly as unto death even if it's to borrow just borrow i want gifts every day if in two days he does not send recharge card this guy doesn't love me god forbid you delete his number what sort of life are you living that's a mindset that must come under scrutiny ah many of you are looking at me frowning you've not started you better look at me well because i will press this thing like an iron till it stays the brother is working hard trying to save a little you have started announcing your birthday in september from february this guy is already been under pressure what is this lady saying now in essence i want to come for koinonia and it's raining the guy is okay let me arrange a small bike for you just cut the phone bike don't look for a taxi to carry me what sort of life is that everybody says submit in everything this thing is many many ladies i will say it i love you too much because that mindset is what has pushed many of us it's a mindset we have suffered a lot of things and you believe that the man is a scapegoat that will make you feel happy what they didn't give you at home in your own father's house you want to yoke the man now to give you by force they give you five thousand naira pocket money the guy is giving you forty thousand it's not enough you know my needs are increasing ah the guy just calculates and says ah this relationship is just six months my back is already paining me what sort of thing is this don't let society make you feel this is the pattern i'm teaching you the way of the kingdom listen if you are ashamed of being desperate about your relationship and putting your hands on deck to work it together you can as well pack up from now there are many ladies who do not want to show any sign of passion and desperation in their relationship they call it being cheap so when it's time to put their hands they feel embarrassed by it let the guy not think i'm too cheap it's the same thing that happens so when there's anything he says in fact you know that joseph guy you started calling again oh you are now threatening the guy the guy now goes to say please sam borrow me five thousand say to i got this little one say to although it's not enough oh, but to honestly and joseph wanted to give me fifteen thousand oh I'm, I'm not don't feel bad i'm just saying it to let you see how much i'm committed in this relationship what sort of threat is that somebody has been delivered this night in the name of jesus a woman of honor and dignity is a woman that defends the interests of the man a man can meet you with hundred thousand and you will say i have made up my mind i will drink gary with this one we have 200 naira how much do you have 50 naira buy sugar with your own let me buy gary and we'll sit down and while you take it together you tell her i may not be able to show you anything now but i assure you as surely as the god of heaven lives with this word and these principles you will smile one day and the lady says thank god i know things will change in the future but it's not because i'm trusting for future even if it does not change it's a decision by revelation sister the greatest thing you can do to a man in your life is to let him know make him feel secure the way he is not complacent but let him know that is not what is giving you that you love him with passion and you can come and tell him somebody offered me to eat in the restaurant but i came help him soak the gari put the cold water there and say lord we thank you 
because you are changing our lives when i said i loved you i meant it i know you're a man of destiny you are going somewhere it may not look like it please don't be under any pressure i know that i had to help you with 500 naira but i love you and i honor you you have given that man energy to arise and run many ladies are killing their relationships with wrong mindsets then when another lady starts doing to the man what you have refused to do the guy leaves you with your expensive life and your life of no gratitude you feel it's an embarrassment he bought with one for you you laughed and said oh god there are two types this type is fake you self now what for you this guy for the first time went to the market strolled around like a fool in the market looking for with one got what yes it was fake but didn't he try and he brought it and you now put it and say oh well let me tell you the truth i'm not going to put it to i'm telling you straight but so may god help you you are not doing bad look at because he asks you out all of a sudden that brother will leave you and come for fellowship like this and then the first thing is he sees a sister who says good evening ah, the brother has never gotten that kind of thing from you and the lady looks and there's water and says sorry wait don't sit yet and she cleans the chair the brother says in jesus name oh lord i came for con listen listen i'm being sincere with you tonight hallelujah at the end of the meeting the lady is using please i'm sorry thank you remember all those words and after everything this brother goes to the room and he's fighting thoughts oh lord why can i not have this lady behave like this then the sister sends a text may the lord uphold you and make you a mighty man let your seed be mighty upon the earth immediately is receiving it madame now sends her own Oga Alpha, it's 11 o'clock you have not called and it's contrasting and this guy is saying kai oh god i'm already getting to a point where i need to come to terms with myself brothers am i speaking please sisters this is what you are causing a lot of brothers without knowing the brother has 500 naira you go to buy suya you know he has 500 naira you just carry five say put the edge on top cut it whereas this brother was saving 100 naira maybe to take pap and yam later on you are causing pain to this guy then he goes to meet another lady who says look 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 i know you confided in me and you let me know things are not going on well this recharge card you sent i know you tried but i know that you are you are paying the price it's too much look i am i'm very comfortable god bless you before you know it should i tell you what will happen when you finish quarreling that guy he will call the lady who is behaving virtuous when he starts reporting you you are already in trouble red card is already ticking once he starts reporting you to the virtuous lady something is already going wrong and then the lady worsens the situation she says well let's pray for this other one ah added virtue added virtue sisters i'm sharing with you sincere secrets submit your mindset submit your mindset there's no time maybe another time we'll take on the men men you know i always balance equations hallelujah it's very important could it be that there is a sister sitting down here on her way to destroying her marriage because there is no submission you shout at the man any day any time blast him and say after all you are not even among the five people that came close to me if not because of all this christian christian thing what will make me come and talk to you and the brother leaves heartbroken and the brother is now thinking multiply this experience times 20 years 
multiply it times 30 years Multi this one i've not become rich this girl is already killing me the day she becomes madame Nko, that means you enter any of the jeeps when they buy the new jeep and they say leave it let's dedicate you say that's the one i must drive look sisters when you see this lost this bossy domineering attitude is the hand of satan on his way to destroy your relationship are you hearing what i'm saying we are going to pray you must submit if you are not interested in submission don't get married don't get into a relationship there is a beautiful position men honor those below them they respect and they cherish those above them they fight those who claim equality with them when you maintain this beautiful position it's not making you weak ladies learn to speak to your man learn to honor him send him text messages of dignity listen many of you don't know what it means to be a man is 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 bigger than bringing children into the world the responsibility when all of you pray for the rent you say in jesus name i saw a vision rent is coming you go to bed it's left for the man to translate that vision into reality we hardly remember father's day we remember mother's day when is father's day we forget the fathers these are the men that labor let me tell you you don't know what it means to be a man you're sitting down there are school fees there are all kinds of things please ladies respect men respect these brothers you see they may be foolish but respect them they may sound naive god knows why he put them in that position when you maintain that posture you're on your way to entering a godly relationship it cannot always be your way write it there are many ladies if it's not your way to hell with it change tonight change tonight if taiwo says we should go this way and i say we should go this way both of us must be able to submit to the word of god if the word of god says two of you come this way we should not be embarrassed to tilt and bend to this third witness the most authority above us is someone learning something tonight this is how to become a woman of virtue i submit to you many of the ladies in our generation are not virtuous ladies please don't feel offended i honestly submit to you under god and without any bias the average lady including in the church they are not virtuous they are godly but they are not virtuous this is why it looks like marriage is very difficult no man wants a liability in his life sisters and you you better listen to what i'm saying could it be the reason why some of us have not had a husband or somebody come into your life you are rude at everybody you can't greet anybody whenever you want to be, say please let people not think i'm doing notice me i'm being desperate please me too i have dignity dr mrs becky and is one woman that i have come to model there are two women that mentor me as far as the character of family and how a woman should be at in the house one is dr mrs becky and the other one is reverend mrs funke felix adejumo these two women have demonstrated to me the most authentic revelation of womanhood and it has helped me to submit to christ you see why many believers do not have authentic power they have not submitted to christ in everything they believe in god but they have not submitted you have not submitted your finances you've not submitted your body god tells you to go on a three-day fast lord i want my comfort you already died to set me free why do i need to die again there is no submission are you seeing how it relates to christ and the church like a faithful bride that's why most of the songs that i write i write songs that connote my submission 
I sing songs that connote his authority. It's not because I know I don't know that I am one with him. When you come into the kingdom, you will drop down as a woman. That means every man who truly works with God should be able to understand a woman because that is really what he is in the spirit too. Like women, there are times we are stubborn and we have all kinds of mood swings. But like a loving husband, God understands. There are times we even yell at him. Just like a lady will yell at the guy she's going out with or the husband. Even call him stupid. But God looks at our hearts, not our actions. And while you are insulting him and saying, God, I'm disappointed. You let this happen to me. God just keeps quiet. Men, learn this. When God is silent, he's about to speak. When you're a man who talks too much, you are not strong. Great men are men of few words. Let the woman be ranting. When she finishes, you calm down. That's a man talking. You too, you join, you start talking, then you start crying too. Two brides. You must sustain strength and stability. Hallelujah. They are coming to drive you out of the house. There's no rent. The woman has cried and done everything. Even gets angry and says, I told you to get that job. You didn't get that job. And the man keeps quiet. And later, he now calls her. And when he's calling her, she's afraid. Because she's thinking he's going to give her a dirty slap or something. And the man says, look, I understand. I know what you're going through. And I'm sorry. And she's flattered and embarrassed. And her perception about the man is changing. Is this not what Jesus Christ does to you? After we do all the nonsense that we do, we run to him. And when we run to him like the prodigal son, he doesn't stand us out and say, go back, go back. He says, come. Hallelujah. Husbands, you must love your wife unto death. You must sacrifice unto death. Jesus modeled that and showed it to us. He is always responsible. Wives, you must honor your husband. I didn't say that. Let me add it. Husbands, when a woman submits to you, you must show forth a level of responsibility that justifies that submission. Are you getting my point? When you keep starving a woman every day and say that's how Nigeria is, she gets up to go and look for something and the man and please don't get me wrong but i need to talk to some of us who are from the north because it's generally believed that the north and the middle belters have, have, have shown quite a strong level of irresponsibility we get married to a lady pay the dowry and throw her away and we say we need three more children in this household and the woman is saying for who to feed you see a woman going to the farm we, we went for a meeting in a particular place I won't mention in Nigeria and I saw women riding bicycles they are the ones carrying firewood and doing everything and I saw the men they just sat down with their pot bellies just taking beer and gisting around their neighborhood I said what cross irresponsibility of the highest order listen let me tell you brothers and sisters you may not get a job now but are you reading books you may not get a job now. Can't you get up and make yourself productive? Stop taking the lady for granted. Yes, she has humbled herself and you are drinking Gary together. But do you want to keep drinking Gary forever? Don't stretch her generosity. Ladies, shout and tell the guys, wake up. Say it. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Many of us are not doing anything. There is none of us here who is young. Young enough to begin to plan your life. What books are you reading? What are you doing about your finances? Have you read any book on fatherhood? We are going to round up. All the brothers stand up. Lift your right hand. And let's trust God for grace.
we must correct what is happening in the family don't feel embarrassed about it i preach like this i don't shout out of annoyance it's out of passion say after me in the name of jesus i receive grace to be a responsible husband to be a responsible father to be a responsible leader i receive grace to pay the price now and build my spiritual life and build my leadership life and build my family life and build my financial life my wife will call me blessed my children will call me blessed my generation will call me blessed my home will be a model home may god bless you and may he make this confession become true in your life in the future don't forget that you stood before god's people and lifted your hands when it's 10 years down the line when young men become draculas in their house remember you made a commitment now i will preach it while i have access to you all the men that are killing their wives many of us here over 70 percent we grew under hostile homes our fathers were draculas they practically abused us it took the grace of god for god to navigate the way you cannot park in the same parking lot your parents parked and expect a different result you must take a decision now and that decision is not by faith you will begin to walk at it no more joking around you are in a relationship you cannot be doing calls from morning to night let there be a time you are reading book go on youtube study on establishment study on godly parenting there's no time where our time is already spent I'll, maybe i'll touch a bit next week before we go into another topic please make that make that commitment i listened to a message some weeks ago maybe about two weeks by dr miles munro on fatherhood when i listened to that message i got down on my knees and i cried i said lord even at this point i am not satisfied i want to be an award-winning husband i want to be an award-winning father i want my children not to run away when they hear the horn of my car i want them to stand outside rejoicing that when my children don't see me for six hours they miss me many of you have not been home in years and you are not missing anybody because of the pain you have gone through you were busy insulting your father now in a few weeks or few months or few years it will now be your turn you're already emulating the mindset that you've lived under that's why god brought you to koinonia to change you jesus is a responsible person as that husband he gives you breath he grants you favor he forgives he understands that you are weak like the woman who is called a weaker vessel he knows that your frame is human and that there are some things you cannot take you must begin to show compassion brothers show compassion to these sisters many of you are bullies you bully every lady around you many of you are in relationships and your relationship has all kinds of tension nobody can talk to you you don't listen to anybody's opinion you do it as you please you want the lady to come to your place where are you come now come now i don't want to hear anything you better change better change i show you a great mystery i show you a great mystery god has never failed in his responsibility as a faithful husband god has been faithful to an extent that after his finished work he still sat down at the right hand making intercession for the saints how many of you have given excuses for your wives how many have given have given excuses for the lady you stand with the lady you are going out with tearing her into pieces in the presence of other ladies and so she lacks the dignity can i tell you something brothers you the lady your wife is a reflection of the honor you are put on her are you hearing what i'm saying your wife just like the church 
is the reflection of the honor that Christ has put upon us. He has made us head over principalities and powers. He gave us dominion. You must bring your wife to be a partaker of your honor and dominion. You see certain men, millionaires, great men, and you now see their wives, wretched, trekking around, whereas they have four cars at home. I show you a mystery never do to any woman what jesus christ did not do to you write it brothers never do to any woman what jesus christ didn't do to you is wrong is ungodly please sit down ladies please stand up we're going to pray all ladies our sisters please kindly stand up this is a very prophetic commitment married or not married please stand up lift your hands say after me in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be a woman of excellence to be a woman of virtue to be a woman desperate to make my marriage work say it to be a woman that represents godliness to be a woman that reflects the image of the perfect church i receive grace to be submissive i receive grace to be temperate i receive grace to be modest i receive grace to be virtuous I receive grace for self-control I receive grace to love my husband to submit to him my children will call me blessed there's no fear in my home there's no tension in my home I embrace the mindset of the kingdom and I refuse any mindset that makes me short of being the perfect bride may the lord bless you see let me tell you in the years to come when we celebrate godly children when we celebrate the grace of god we will meet again in future and many of you will thank me for this because your home will be a tension free zone i vowed from a very young age that some of the things I suffered growing up, my children will never ever have to go through it. It's a pledge before the God whom I serve. Brothers, don't carry any man's daughter to your house and jeopardize the remaining part of her life. It's better to remain single. God will honor you for it. Especially those of us in ministry. If you are getting into ministry listen very well because ministers have a lot of tendencies everyone rise up on your feet in one minute before we pray hallelujah just play it softly please i want everybody to think for one minute have your relationship with jesus christ being like that of a faithful bride and a husband so all of us are brides now i want you to reflect in one minute is the mystery of marriage at work in your relationship with the lord jesus christ can you truly say you have been a faithful bride submitting to him in all things not just believing him many of us have submitted our finances but not our bodies we are still playing harlotry with God. Many of us, I wish I had time, I would have taught on the faithful bride. There's still a, another part of the teaching, in fact, a major part, because I wanted to talk about spiritual fornication, the concept, how that marriage, I, I needed us to understand the purpose of marriage, how that the purpose of marriage brings about oneness, and marriage from the Bible is an antidote to a life of fornication just like commitment to god 
is the antidote to going around and mixing spirituality with witchcraft and mixing it becoming a faithful bride that submits god will grant us grace but i want you to think your relationship with jesus christ there are many of us you cannot say you have been faithful imagine yourself as a woman right now have you been faithful to this husband that has never failed imagine a man in your life who cannot fail imagine a man in your life who loves you more than your wildest imagination that in spite of our hollow tree he has been faithful please listen we're about to pray now i want you to imagine everybody for one minute what kind of home do you see yourself building especially our brothers i want you to imagine right now what do you see your children calling you in the next 10 years a disaster in their life or a gift what do you see happening sisters what do you see your husband calling you after five years can he look at you and say even if i missed out on the will of god i know i did not i never made a mistake will a brother look at you after 10 years and be crying every day and said i missed it oh god i missed it there's one of my friends quite an elderly friend of mine every time he talks to me about marriage he tells me something he said i missed it in my marriage make sure you do not miss it this man loves the lord with all his heart i'm telling you i have never seen i thought i was a giver till i met that man that man dwarfed my giving life by a factor that got me scared and i said how could such a nice man make a mistake in his marriage see if you need to go for a retreat over your relationship let me even talk to you if you are in a relation if you are married well that's all right but if you are in a relationship that you know is not going anywhere don't feel embarrassed and say people have already seen me with the guy what do i tell people if there is need to go for a retreat let me tell you right now the sign are the periodic checks that come to your heart here and again those things are the voice of god calling you to go and flog things out there's no perfect relationship but there are godly relationships go back to god and flog it out with destiny so that if in case it was because of the guy's money or your perception of his anointing that's what drove you you better find a solid reason right now that can last for eternity and there are many of us here sisters god is speaking to you godly men come and keep asking you out you know the food that they are receiving the spiritual nourishment i'm not talking about careless people who parade in a crowd like this as as believers a godly man comes to your life you keep posting and pushing everybody instead of going home to pray build compatibility and settle down maritally you keep pushing everybody around only to find out that life is like a graph there is a peak period of your life there is a level you get to where all the men who would have married you are already married at that point you don't have options again and there are some of us brothers you keep parading ladies around you believing that you are a fine guy you are a charismatic guy because of your anointing there are all kinds of ladies parading around you you have promised all of them that you are thinking about it and you are feeling hot the bible says do not be deceived god cannot be mocked you have stopped those sisters they have said no to every brother waiting for you because you gave them assurance that you are coming it's time to think about your life this night think about your life this night do not make commitment to any man's daughter that you do not plan to go far with hallelujah now lift your voice and ask for grace first to be a faithful bride this is the secret of spiritual power we are out of time but i want you to pray please pray this is a most important commitment 
no matter what it is that you want to do just give yourself some time and pray lord i receive grace to be a faithful bride i submit to you i submit my body i submit my body i submit my mortal physical body it will not be used as an instrument of fornication it will not be used as an instrument of spiritual harlotry i submit thou husband faithful husband of my life like a faithful bride i minister to your needs the bible says her desire shall be to her husband my desire is only to my king my desire is only to my lord my desire is only the one who paid the dowry to make me a bride i cannot look at any other god again i am fulfilled i am satisfied there may be many gods working magic but i am committed to be a faithful bride when things go well and when things don't go well i have pled my allegiance like a faithful bride i submit to you when ministry goes well i still submit to you when you give me prosperity i submit to you make a decision it's not enough to believe in god when you come to the kingdom you submit hallelujah now you are going to pray you are still praying as the bride you're going to say lord tonight i submit my mentality i submit my mentality lift your voice and pray you are not just a husband that is there to meet my needs you also have needs i'm sorry for embracing a mindset that only thinks about myself my money my marriage my exams my academics my ministry many of us have been unfaithful bride we forget that god as a husband also has a need a need to be honored a need to be believed a need to be trusted a need to be represented hallelujah make up your mind tonight to truly submit to god in everything one last prayer point we're going to pray right now you're going to say lord my marriage will not fail because of me i won't be the reason why my relationship will fail guys keep coming into my life and everybody is complaining the problem is not the man the problem is me help me oh god pray guys you have entered 12 relationships none is working i assure you the problem is not the guy the problem is you pray I receive grace to play my role. Sisters, pray. I don't see submission as an embarrassment again. I submit my mindset. I submit my ideologies. I serve the man. He enjoys my presence. My desire is unto him. I put my hand on the plow. I'm determined to make my relationship work. Hallelujah. Father, we trust you for marriages in this place that only reflect Christ and his church. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy to every dying marriage may the hand of the Lord come upon you every family facing any kind of marital tension I stretch my hands and I pray that the mercy of God comes into that in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah please let me recommend two books very quickly hallelujah please 
every lady should read this before she gets married i i i i forgotten i think 15 plus one uh 15 plus one secret of a successful marriage i think something like that dr mrs becky and Enche, please i kneel down and i beg you go and get it get it if oga jordan is here call oga jordan tell him to branch abuja as he comes back from lagos and buy it brothers read the principle of fatherhood by miles munro the principle of fatherhood by next week media i will download a very important video please next week all the brothers you can collect it there's a video on fatherhood very serious video I think it's about one hour 30 minutes we'll download it and you'll be free just come with a flash drive we'll give you you can sit down with your friends and listen to it hallelujah you're worshiping with us for the first time please rise up on your feet and come out very quickly god bless you we love you please very quickly very quickly thank you for coming don't be ashamed don't be afraid this is home for you god bless you celebrate them as they come inside and outside we have a prayer and a blessing for you hallelujah god bless you keep coming those of you worshiping with us for the first time we love you we honor you thank you so much for coming this is koinonia bless you for coming you will never be the same in the name of jesus christ stretch your hands saints of god as we pray for them prophesy blessings upon them your life will reflect this spiritual marriage of faithfulness and submission in the name of the lord jesus we declare that you are blessed you are blessed in your going out you are blessed in your, in your coming in all that you do is blessed in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you so much we bless you with the blessings of the heavens and with the blessings of the house hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.